ready? Okay. So good evening. Welcome to the uh, February 15th uh, Brookfield Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, please rise for the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to do a moment of silence for the evening for um, James Wilson, who is a lifelong resident of Brookfield, and he was a former selectman, and he was also uh, part of Tan Castle in the carpentry division. So, and his wife Barbara has served on many, many committees in this town. So, I'd like to do a moment of silence for him.
So with all of this in mind, if we close the warrant on March 22nd, and the reason that we close the warrant is because it's a deadline, it's a statutory deadline for our citizens' petitions, which means once it's closed, it cannot be opened again because you, you can run up against a citizen's petition that says, well, you opened it for them, you need to open it for us, but they have a cutoff. So you can't reopen it for other situations. So we need to pick when the meeting's going to be and then work backwards to figure out when the warrant's going to come. When are elections this year? They're the Tuesday before that, which is no, what your town meeting is today. Yes, and so, oh, I'm sorry, Len. so it's the Monday before that meeting. And I went by rule uh, by law where your meeting was on May 6th, would have been the Friday after the election. The election. Uh, they have to be after election? It could be yeah. before the election, but you're gonna bounce everything back yeah. a full week if you wanna do it that, that What way. is your reasoning and why you wanna do it? Well, just for anybody, like, for instance, what happened to me in the past two years. I joined boards two days, like I signed the paperwork with the clerk two days before the, the meetings, the mm -hmm. annual town meeting. I had no clue what was going on because I only had two days. But, yeah, but this past year though, it was in, was it late June we had it? Yeah, it was yeah. Yeah. Well, we the end of June. It was yeah. the end of June, so you know, you have enough time, but I, I this is something I've always said, it's, it's kind of hard to let a new person come in only being around right. for Right, and, yeah. and we did, yeah. and we did yeah. actually get, we did actually get rid of that bylaw. So I guess the, the question would be for us, mm -hmm. right? And I almost don't, I almost don't want to vote it tonight. I'd like to understand, besides the budget, what activities or more articles do we even like? Do we have any bylaws in the work from like? Planning for it, we have, yes. and and like, how does their timeline look in terms of alignment with? Can they make it for May or not? Well, and that's that's a valid question because I, I believe the planning board only meets once a month, right? And because I set such an aggressive timeline, um, I was speaking with Sharon earlier that we wouldn't be necessarily be able to get the changes um, to the zoning bylaws in time. Right. So, so then it becomes a question of the other bylaw issues that I've, I've seen. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's okay. kind of like pausing, but um, the other bylaws that people have requested, I have a very long list. But I write the warrant myself. I don't send it out to town council to write. I write the warrant. And um, the bylaw changes. One of the suggestions was to change selectmen to select board throughout the entire document. That's a very easy one sentence, yeah. basically one paragraph article that will take care of it throughout the entire bylaw. That's not a big deal. Um, right. the substantive ones are going to be anything that planning would want to put. Right. Um, so that's like that's that's one concern that I have. Mm -hmm. that, want to make certain, and I, and I don't know, is, is a month enough of a difference, you know, is a, is a month enough of a difference for them to deal with any of the bylaw changes that we have for them, right? So, so it, well, maybe we could, I could ask Sharon. Outside, Sharon. outside of this meeting, so. Um, what timeline they were looking at for yeah. completing their file. Yeah, so. Um, Let's check on that. Is but, there? But as long as they, they have a bylaw in place, it can still go. We can put it in the warrant, and the only thing that they would, I mean, if that's what, because I, I, I agree with you. I would like to see the warrant close on 322 22. Mm -hmm. But if they already have a spot where they're going to put you the mean warrant, a place holder, place holder. Is that all right? Well, it's, it's okay with me. The problem is that it has to get to town council no later than April 7th. So their warrant article has to be fully written and approved by April 7th because that's when it would have to get to town council because he needs a week and then he needs two 
two weeks for shipping two weeks, and then we need a week for it to be posted. So all of this stems from the meeting day counting backwards. Now, we were not sure that they probably have enough time to do Well, I don't know, when's your next, when's your April meeting? Sixth. It's the first Wednesday in April. It's okay. the sixth. It's the April It's the day before. And that's when they would be finalizing their so the award on this. So this the <laughs> timeline would not work no. in yeah. that instance. Cool. So we we'd have to bump it if we wanted to include that. Which I don't have a problem with that. I was I was simply trying to so when we when we get the meeting done earlier in the year. If there is uh, a weather issue or a health issue, you have a much bigger window. Then you do. If you plan it for the end of June, you can't. Well, I, don't, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to plan it for the end of June. I was thinking maybe the first week of June. Call it a month. And then that would it would put us at the third of June, and that would give us. So what night would you talk? The Thursday or Friday? It's a Friday. It's a Friday. Yeah, remember we, we tried the Thursday, and the Thursday wasn't too bad. I think people kind of liked it. That's what we did last year. So you want to move it to June 3rd, or the first full week, which would be June 10th? I was thinking, well, you know, the problem, at, so Memorial Day is oh, what? When's, uh, uh -huh. when's graduation? Yeah, when's graduation? Cause it's usually it's the, I think it's usually the first Sunday of June. Oh, can we look it up? So they might be, they might not allow anything to be used yeah. the weekend before. But, but if, it's it's nice, nice, if it's nice weather, they hold it outside. Yeah, but you can't find a town meeting yeah. hoping that yeah. it's going to be nice weather. Yeah. We're not doing it out of the gym <laughs> or the auditorium. So, and are, are we still able to hold it outside the town limits, or are we back to having them hold it inside town limits? I don't know the answer to that question, but I can find out. Because that may also, to a certain extent, make some of the decision for us. Then it would be held at the elementary school. Yeah. And that's the next largest. Well, that's where we are. Well, shouldn't yeah. we just plan on holding it at the elementary yeah. school in the first place? I think well, we so. should, so long as so long as we can get in there. Have we verified that they are allowing outside groups in there? Well, I am meeting with uh, a school principal on Thursday, so I'll yeah, we've always had it. Yeah. And then, then when we were able to, we always used to have the big hall upstairs. And why wouldn't they allow yeah. outside groups they in the town? Well, during during during, during, during certain COVID. portions of, of the whole COVID deal, they were not allowing outside groups to use anything on the school premises. Oh, yeah, they, they they that's rather unique. Like, I can't ask, but they weren't even allowing the pool to be used for a certain amount of time. Like, there were portions in there where Unless it was like for swim team or something. Like yeah, the, the community, community yeah. opening of the pool. I don't want to make that. Same with the basketball. Basketball, they had to do it outside at um, Lewis Field rather than at the uh, gymnasium. So I saw that we'll in those days. All right, so. Another reason to plan this now, so we can find a place to hold it. Yeah, we can verify. <laughs> Actually, it's good that we're having this discussion now because we, really, yeah. we need to definitely verify. So, it did you find like, when end the school end of school? Uh, end of school. It looks like so school vacation starts the twenty first. Um, but they had two days off. Though. Oh no! I'm sorry. That's I gave, it gave me the February calendar. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm having two days off, so their proposed day would probably be the 23rd. Because they have to make up those days. Don't so they? No, they don't. They're calculated in the school year. They don't use the number that they calculated. Oh, they have early. oh okay. Yeah. Which is kind of and, and with the digital learning, I don't even know if the snow days or anything were the day. High school, commence, high school commencement is the 12th of June this year. Oh, it's, oh, it's later. Okay. It's later. Okay, but we need to know when the elementary school is there. So,
say explicitly that really. Yeah, that's something that probably have to talk to Kathleen about I'm sure. So alrighty then. Has it ever been held during the day on no. no, we talked about that in the Yeah, I just know a lot of people have had to duck out, you know, before the time meeting's over because when it goes till 10, see, 11 o'clock. See, and, and, and that's the challenge that I have with Thursday is that it's the equivalent yeah. of a work person school night, and, sure. and I, I know that some people like this, but some people hate it. We, yeah. did, we did, we would bond, we bounced around all these different nights for years, but it didn't seem so. We did try Thursday last year. And so we want to go back to Friday then? Honestly, I, I'm going to tell you from a standpoint of somebody that has to be someplace at 8 o'clock in the morning the next day, yeah. if we can afford to do yeah. the Thursday thing. Or a uh, kid that wakes up at 5 to get ready for school. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of brutal. Okay. So, well, how about then talking with the How about doing it then? Oh, we can't say the 10th, but. Commencement to two days after that. Yeah. yeah. So go back to June 3rd. I, I really think June. So June 3rd is hard because it is the week. Of, it's a short week. From I was not sure. Oh, because of the Memorial Day holiday. Because of Memorial Day holiday. Oh, that's not bad. Holland but actually has their town meeting the day after Memorial Day. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> but I think I think June 3rd is the date that makes sense mm -hmm. because it gives us enough slack that if something yeah. happens. And do have to like shift it around. We've got almost 30 days to figure it out. Okay, so we've got so if the annual town meeting is June 3rd, then the warrant has to be posted on May 27th. The warrant has to be completed and sent to town council by May 13th, which means you have to have your final vote on the warrant by May 10th. Um, and then the warrant will close on April. That sounds doable. Yeah, because they have one meeting for the first and the third. I would maybe have it closed on the 19th. Hang on a minute. I need, I need a couple of weeks to get it together. Oh, okay. So right. one, two, yep. Yeah, if it closes on the 19th, that would work. Yeah, I think it'll close, close on the 19th. Do we have a meeting scheduled for yeah. the 19th? So even though it's closed on that night, that, that means people have to get made the, their submissions by the 19th. Yeah. It has no voting. So no. There won't be time for me to get oh, it to no. you. Oh, I understand that. So. And so now we definitely, definitely would, I would like to vote and you also said too that we don't open the warrant up again and leave it closed. No, it, it actually, it has to stay closed. You do a serious disservice to the residents oh, okay. and citizens and petition. And you open yourself up to liability yeah. if you reopen the warrant once it's closed. But we always have, and that's something I've never been Well, I think part of the reason why we have is I think the prior interpretation of the way our bylaw was written was that we were obligated to open it if we got a citizen's petition. No, it's yeah. absolutely not. And that's statutory. That has nothing to do with the bylaw. That's yeah. Massachusetts law. That when the warrant is closed, that's the cutoff for that. So. And then the warrant, the warrant's posted seven days before the election. Yeah, so the warrant would be uh, posted on 527-22. Okay. So we need a motion to set the town annual town meeting date for 6-3 with the warrant closing on 421. Is that a motion we need? No, four. No, on April 29. Or April 19th. Okay. I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion for uh, the warrant to be closed on five. No, if, on April 19th, and for the town meeting to be set for June 3rd on a Friday evening. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Oh, you would try to change um. You said how you wanted to do like a, a public budget hearing? Yeah, I, that, that was thrown in and exactly my goal to do that um, the week, two weeks before the meeting. So 
Okay. Um, that would that would fall in line with the 513 kind of date-ish, somewhere in there. It would be that week. Yeah. I've always wanted to do that, and everybody, nobody would agree to it. Because I think it's a good idea. And then people can come into the meeting and know what's going on, and they can vote, and they don't have all the questions. Yep. Okay, so the next thing we have on the agenda is uh, to sign the um, loan documentation for the fire truck. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I have before me is a um, anticipation note for $484,155. Can I get a motion to um, sign that? I would like a motion to sign the fire truck note of 
popping up. I don't know if they fall like street lights, but like I've seen stop signs, the flashing stop signs, yeah. they're solar power. Same thing with the yield signs and stuff like that. Yeah, we have. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was I was curious if you, you know, if there were solar options that would be. And again, I have, I have no idea. Um, we, we don't own the poles, so yeah, we, we can't just say, you know, hey, uh, <laughs> I was going to say Bob, <laughs> oh, it's late. Um, <laughs> but we, it depends on who owns the poles. Does it belong to the cable company? Does it belong to the electric company? Does it belong to the telephone company? And everybody has to be on board and put the light on it. It's, it's not just a one-stop shop. So. Okay. Can individuals, because absolutely I don't they know, can. Can individuals pay to have poles still put up? I wonder if that's. I okay. know that there have been residents in other towns who have done it on private roads. Yes. I don't know that they can do it on a public road because we own the right of way, and then someone else owns the pole. Or if the pole was moved in enough where it was on the individual's property, and then essentially they paid for it to be put so in, they paid for it there, and then that street was on there. This person who's been calling me has been also contacting the electric company who keeps telling them that they can't do it, the town has to order the, the light. That okay. if they can't do it, it's on a public street, the town has to order the light. So. Now, for example, I guess, I guess my biggest concern is if somebody needs the street light to get out onto the street, should they be driving at night? And that's a valid question. That's a valid and then it's not being disrespectful. So no, it's not. It's a serious safety concern. Yeah. It's, the, it's the nature of, of, of aging is that, is that nighttime visibility gets really, really hard. It's, it yeah. does. It's also the nature of living out away from a city, too. You just have less street lights right. and less opportunity for street lights. Mm -hmm. But what, we did have a lot more lights, and then I remember years ago when we had an energy crunch day. Yeah, the minute they would take, uh, they weren't laid down. Yep. Yeah, my whole neck is a woods. Literally. No, yeah, there's no street lights. Yeah. It's just, yeah, there are individuals who have large lights that look like street lights. Mm -hmm. They're on their property, but they're not actual street lights. That's I've also, I've also encountered residents who have a private light on a private road that they put up and they just don't want to pay for it anymore, so they want the town to do it now. You pay for everybody else's lights, and then you run into you can't you can't spend public money on a private on a private property, and that whole um, scenario comes into play. But yeah. um, talking about another community like Brookfield, um, our church has three lights on a street wall. Doesn't matter where I'm made, but the street that runs down, and the church has to pay for those three lights. The town does not pay for it. Mm -hmm. And I was very surprised to hear that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how you want to hear No, so, so it means I, I don't know how far $2,000 is going to go because that's how much we have. They're roughly $350 a piece. We looked into it a number of years ago. To just have them put up and the electric company comes and puts one up? $350. Wow, that's actually not that's bad. That's cheap. Depending on, depending, on oh, the, yeah. depending on how, well, that was the price like three years ago. And it also depends on what size arm you put it on, because there's one that's like 350 and there's another one that's like 790 or something like that. But, uh, but most of them, a dec decent size one on a particular length of arm is like 350. Yeah. 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 Is this area yeah. that other people would ask for one? That's just a pole. I have no idea. And then we have to one check in that, and you know, just because I've been doing this so long, you're going to put up a street light and that may not be directly in front of this person's house because of where the pole is mm -hmm. situated and you may have someone complaining that there's a street light shining in their house. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder if, not that I don't want to put more on the highway department because they're swamped as it is, but if we could maybe ask them from their just experience driving around, especially plowing at night, you know, fixes and stuff like that, if they know of any places that maybe yeah, what's the, what's the road that they're there? looking to Kimball Street? Street. Kimball. Okay. That's... Okay, so that's down into yeah. the village area. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> that's yes. down the back of the school area. Yes, yeah. Kimball. Yeah. But I mean, other than the police department, I would think the uh, highway department would probably have the best idea of 
where some could be located, or at least as a starting point. I mean, if National Grid is not, uh, as you said with your emails, not the most responsive. The responses have been bizarre, like completely bizarre. Like completely talking to somebody else almost every time. Yeah. <laughs> and I say, I get the email and I respond like instantly. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really interesting, but I'm pretty sure that's not no, that for me. Who would you like to talk to? And can you answer the question down below? And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I just read that really no. quick. And it kind of gives me a little fluffy yeah. answer and off he goes again. Now, if we had to have, say we decided to put a pole up, do we have to have a pole here? Well, yeah, anytime you have a pole. Yeah, we have to have a here and yeah. a pole here. It depends on if there's a pole in this area that we're Well, there is a pole in this yeah, area. Yeah, there is. But I mean, I'm just saying, a lot of times when people I mean, are building new homes, you have to have a, a pole here. And we have to have one of those at once. I don't, I don't have any criteria whatsoever to determine not whether or not that this person should or should not have a have you a want me to take a ride down Kimball and see exactly what there is to pull pull them? Well you can you can do that, but we, without the criteria as to what the what, where and when a light should be put up, we can't just start throwing lights up. Yeah. 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 I just, I don't really recommend it. Just, no. yeah. Not right. that I, I would, you know, this is an area that genuinely needs lighting, then yes, by all means, go from there. That's why I was thinking highway department might have a good idea of where necessarily maybe dangerous places are, because they're, they're dangerous because they don't have lighting. And then that might at least help us start to set a criteria of you know, danger level, location, uh, lights that are in the vicinity already. Like if it just happens to be where there's a light on one pole and then it skips two poles and then there's another light, like not necessarily. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and that would be kind of a, there, there used to be Sorry. some published studies about like criteria or guidelines. And the type of and, criteria. And, and even the electric companies have moved away from them because there's so much, one of the reasons why we don't have a coherent policy is that there's not coherent guidance about what contributes positively and what negatively impacts safety mm -hmm. in regards to street lighting. Because you, because I, I hate to put it this way, you can find statistics to support either stance that more street lights are That's safer, the the statistics. right? Or that fewer street lights is actually safer because then you have awareness of the traffic that's coming versus you lose headlight yeah. visibility when you, when you bring in street lights. Mm -hmm. So, so LED versus the halogen. Well, everything that goes up now. Yeah, everything now, but if yeah. there's existing ones that have yeah. been replaced. Yeah. Actually, I think they went through and replaced a wall in our town back oh, awesome. in 19. Oh, yeah, they did. They changed them all. Yeah. Like I said, I don't have street lights, so I don't need yeah. to so, There's a lot of complaints, actually, when they put the LEDs up oh, there, that they aren't. They're all right. Yeah. 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 No, because they weren't as bright. They don't. Some of them are. Yeah. Mm. So this, this can come back by another meeting, but we need to get them all rolling so I can respond to this extraordinary. I, I don't know. Child. I don't know if anybody still has Tim Rose contact information. Is he still? Oh. I thought he was retired. Is he retired? Now? I think he's retired. Okay. But he might have an opinion. <laughs> no, he's retired. He might have an opinion. <laughs> Tim Rose. He's uh, he worked for the. He used to work for National Grid. Yeah, National Grid. I can look and see. He looks down on Quay Books. Yeah. You might be willing to at least point us in the right direction. Okay. Are we done with that discussion? Have we beaten that to death? I think we have. Okay. Appointments. We've got me to the WRTA committee. Um, we've got um, Cassandra Buffum for Assistant Animal Control Officer. And then we've got um, Kayla Laporte for EMT training, all of those with uh, terms ending on the 30th of June 2022. I'd like to make a motion to appoint uh, uh, Beth Coughlin as the WRTA Advisory Committee. And Sandra Buffin for the Assistant Animal 
control officer.
Oh, no, the calendar was just, I was just oh. it was going to be in May, and then we got oh. a track, oh, so okay. that's why we're right here. There's still, oh, there's still the first and third. Right. Yep, yeah, first and the third. But the other one we yeah. And then we have, the last thing on the agenda is the policy handbook, and then the uh, other folks including benefits. Is, I need to give you the paperwork for the post of public benefits. No. Policy, okay. What would you be handling it on the question of the old policy? Okay. Okay. I think if you want to see it. I mean, I'm in training with the personnel board, and this is something that we've worked, probably worked on for a good six years ago. It's, you know, it's taken a lot of time. And then when Kelly, offered, when Kelly wanted to be appointed, she's got a lifesaver. And she's gone through a lot of it where town council had approved different things, and Kelly said that they shouldn't have been approved, and she helped us to add a lot. So I think this is something that we've needed a long time for the employees. So this is, I mean, a quick, you know, I don't know if we have to actually have a selectman's vote on this. Too. No, it's just to let you know that it's done, it's ready it's for done. printing. It's ready for printing. And as soon as everything goes, that Amy is going to start getting them out. And everybody will have to sign on the back when they got them. Okay, so, so we'll, we'll have records and receipt. And oh, yeah. Yes. Get records and receipt. And doesn't it even say something too about kids and the ethics? Cool. They have, they have the well, that, that's just part of being a municipal employee. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's reiterated in the handbook that they're responsible to do that. Will this be given to all board members? Too? Yes. Yeah. This goes to yeah. well, because everyone elected, everyone elected, elected, elected yeah. appointed, yeah. stipend, no stipend, part time, full time, everyone's considered an employee. Yeah. So yeah. everyone gets one. With regards to the longevity stipend, mm -hmm. we're including that in the budget. No, it starts in FY24. So oh, that's right, it is FY24. Give us time to plan and get the right information. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of 
policies that were outdated because when it started, they weren't actually required anymore. So um, that was that was tweaked a little bit. Um, and there were several policies actually that were missing that are mandated by the state of Massachusetts. So I put those in. So those I can't remember what they are at the top of my head, but there were three or four of them that weren't that were missing. On records, training, and things like that, like all of the the, the WISP, um, uh, your written information security. Yeah, like the computer, the IT training, yeah, the, all of that the ethics stuff, added. the Corey Sorry. If those haven't been done, once this is implemented, people will have to do it in order to comply with this. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. This is the first time we've had an employee. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just and curious. Yeah. Like, I, I've so seen we're going to need to do checks on oh, yeah. absolutely everyone because it's my understanding it's not going to be here at all. Yeah, Corey, it's pretty correct. There, no, you know, there was there was a round of them done yeah. like seven years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. It wasn't. I think it was. Sorry, it's in here. You all have been done. Is it? Yeah. Thing, yeah. But I we had new employees come on board. Yeah, for new employees, new employees have been done with it. Uh, come on board. They request a story. But I don't think we went out for employees. I don't think we had employees who were already employed here. Had a okay. I'm sure we did. They did them on everybody. I don't remember. I, I never had one. We did. I thought Nick did one on everyone. No, 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 I've never. I've never had one. It was just new people that were coming on board. And who is Nick? Nick Tom. He was a slut. He was a slut in this time. Oh, I don't think they ran around. on that. There are people that were on boards. No, well, I never had any. They did run on me when I first started. Yeah, we, oh, yeah. we didn't have them done with people that were already here. Yeah, I, I didn't have it done when I joined either board. Because yeah. um, I had asked about it, because I had to do it for everything else. Well, it's usually mm -hmm. like, in, I think, different ones, like people that are hired, like it was something like Karen had one. We did one for sure. Kelly. Like, I have no idea. Someone did one on me. I handed to the paperwork to have it done, but it went to Sarah. Yeah, so she was looking to the treasurer. Is Amy department. going to do them? Or? She is not currently the Corey officer, no. And to my understanding, I don't know who the Corey officer yeah. is. So. Well, we had. The, mm -hmm. I know that the, uh, I believe it used to go down to the fire, uh, to the police station, yeah. too. The police, and I think he did some. I know Peter did some. Is not allowed to. Excuse me? Peter did that. Yeah, that was he was doing his own for his. Oh, yep, yeah, okay. So the library typically does their own. Yeah. PD does their own, but the chief can't do court checks on anyone outside mm -hmm. the police station. So we need to take a court check. We need to designate somebody as designated yeah. court officer. Yeah. Okay. Any recommendations? Um, well, I don't want to throw another thing on Amy's plate, but honestly, it, it falls in HR. I've done it. Um, I've seen the town treasurers do it. Whoever's had an HR do it. Um, it's, I've seen the executive assistants be the quarry officers. It's really wide open to whomever you trust, but it goes with the position, not the person. Right. So you would appoint it to a position and make it part of that position. I don't mind doing it. If you need me to volunteer, it will. And then it goes in the apartment record, which would go into the church's office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it actually makes more sense to keep so it in the central point. clearing house, honestly. Yeah. Because all of the um, sensitive information comes and goes in that office. Right. So. So the little metal point carrot in this corner? No, it's not actually that it's the exact opposite. But, but, uh, the treasurer. Unfortunately, like you said, probably about the last thing that, that she needs an additional thing on her plate. Right. Uh, well, it's not. So the initial quarry checks are, she can probably do them in stages. They, it's not going to be a huge um, adventure after that because we don't have that big of a turnover. We have people that have worked here for 46 years. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, just the board that way. It's wild, yeah. Yeah, it's just the boards. I don't even remember anybody doing them on the board. No, we don't even have that much. No, no, but <laughs> no, that's, no, no, that's, really that's where the turnover is. Done, but that's normally not done on the board. Why wouldn't it be done on the board, so, the board. Yeah. on the board if they're a town employee? If they're an elected official, what difference does it make? You can't fire them. I 
I never, I never see them down on a bunch of channels. I don't think it's a bad idea, yeah. but if you have no recourse if you don't like the court that comes back. And if they say no, what are you going to do? If they say no, they say no. But mm -hmm. I, mean, I personally would like to see that at least presented in, in like, I can, I can see what you point to the officials. Yeah. yeah and I mean, you know, do it across the board to everybody, but you, you just understand. No, I, I, I understand there'd be the, the no recourse if they say no or something comes back or whatnot. But mm -hmm. just as, uh, I mean, if it gets put in, if everybody who's on a board who's elected has a personnel file, yeah. then it would just be put in their personnel file. They only file. have a personnel file if they're paid. Okay. They're paid. Okay. They receive a stipend, they receive a check, and they have a file on them. Okay. Otherwise, we do not. Okay. But personally, I'd like to see it at least well, presented. Think, well, I think and then it's, it's up to them if they. If they I think so, but if they, the treasurer does take it over, I think that Let's do this phase. Let's start by getting okay. the employees done, and then let's yeah. let's reconsider in like three or four months. Let's reconsider on with regards to the board. So, can I get a motion to appoint the treasurer as the Corey officer, Corey Sorry officer? Um, I will make a motion to appoint the treasurer as Corey. All right, I will second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Anything else for this evening? This is on the agenda. We just do a real high level on the other post-employment benefits so we can think on it between now and the next week. So it's my understanding that the town adopted the law to provide OPEP um, other post-employment benefits to past town employees. But there's no trust set up in the trust document. There's no um, investment policy in place. And in order to yeah, put it some money, actually, into a stabilization program. Right, but there's a whole lot of but stuff no that has to be no done uh, yeah. statutorily. So the, what we need to start doing is getting the paperwork together and done. Okay. Um, I have some of the trust, the trust investment policy in gave it to me uh, for you guys to review, and I didn't include it in the email I sent to Karen, so that's um, what should have been in the packet, so I apologize for that. But that's the first step, is having a policy, and then we use the trust documents to be sold on sign, and there's actually a warrant article that needs to go on in order for us to properly invest the OPEP money. You don't just throw it in a stabilization account. It's supposed to be invested. Understood. So, Understood. so this is just to kind of get everything started and make sure that the town is on the right track to have a legal OPEP fund so we can invest the money properly. Okay. So we can no, fund it stabilization properly. is typically invested. So it might not meet the same criteria. No, it does not. It is, it is a completely separate um, account. OPEP is its own little uh, little bubble of, of okay. funding and we need an actuarial um, assessment, done. assessment done and we're looking into what that's going to cost. I think it's probably going to run. The initial one is usually pretty big, so like 15000 for your initial one and then it be like, because you do it every two years. So you do a big one, a little one, a big one, a little one. Yeah, I, I know there's I know there's several uh, communities out by the Cape that have have elected to do theirs through kind of some collect, collective investments yeah, with well, their entities and, and they get their actuarial work done as part of the management of the funds. There are, are several uh, counties and districts and Berkshire County has um, they went out to bid on actuarial services for the entire county, which got a great deal. I think we paid seven thousand one year, and then it was a thousand the next, and then seven and one, seven and one. But the initial one's going to be bigger, right? And, um, so that's kind of a rough estimate on the initial cost, and then the next year will be like two thousand. Unless, unless the costs have gone up exponentially, I have not seen an actuarial assessment bill for two years. So. 
So is that something that you're already targeting on the budget? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's already included in the budget. So. Um, now we talked about closing the warrant, but can we have, can we start informal drafting of what we think is going to be on the warrant besides? Well, yeah, the closing of the warrant is just for other people to get outside articles to, to the board. But so it's, 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 going to be, it's going to be pretty much put together before it closes. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing is that other years it's been very willy nilly. I don't want to say willy nilly. It's been kind of trying to keep track of it has, has been all over the place. So if we can start to. You probably didn't have somebody in house who could write it, though. True. No. Yeah. So. That'll, that'll make a big difference. But I'll, I'll write the whole warrant and start to finish. Okay. And town council will get their fingers on it two weeks before the meeting, or two weeks before it needs to be posted. Right. So, okay. And I have a folder I started the day I started working here. And it's filled with notes and things that need to be addressed for the town meeting. <laughs> Do we, uh, um, is, is that one who is something you can share at our next meeting? Just like, or do you know some of the items you want to hit as part of this town meeting? Well, it, it, there are a lot of little things. Um, things that I've been asked by other well, I can go right and get my notebook if you want. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, part of, it's part of the meetings. So. Yeah, well, it is. Yeah, actually, it was. It was part of the meeting. It was on the agenda yeah. to talk. I don't know. Do you guys have any interest in covering any of that tonight or just hold off? Until oh, we hold off. Okay. 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 <laughs> Could you forward the OPEB information though after this meeting so that we have a chance to review it? Let's go ahead and put it up back on the agenda for the next meeting. Yes. I will. Um, I'll scan them and send them over to you. That'd be great. So. All right. Yeah. Awesome. So can I get a motion to adjourn? I have a motion to adjourn at seven fifteen.